Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you commanded us to pray for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We beg you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit upon us now. That your Spirit may take control of us. That we may fully surrender to your Spirit. That your Spirit may lead us and guide us. For we beg you these things, Lord Jesus, in your most holy name. Amen. Mary, Mother of Jesus, pray for us. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Are you ready? Just a member next uh, November 1st is our first men, our second men's conference. It's going to be held at the Warner Theater. So you all want to come to that. Uh, the other speakers that are going to be there with me make me look gentle. So literally, when, when, uh, when the one guy comes, uh, Jesse Romero, <laughs> just be ready. I'm always happy when Jesse speaks before me, and he will because... Uh, Again, he makes me look gentle. I can get away with anything after Jesse speaks is what I always say. Okay, so today if you're a Catholic or a daily mass goer, you heard the first reading today from the letter to the Galatians. And it's also the one that's going to be in your, for discussion afterwards. And it's Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 25. And here's Paul, again, talking to the church of Galatia. And he's telling him about how one is supposed to live your life in Christ. And again, we get, we get two different, you know, fights throughout the years that, you know, you either, you're saved by faith, it doesn't matter what you do, or you're saved by works, it doesn't matter what you believe. Both of those things are wrong. It's not either or, it's both and. You know, your faith must be lived. You've got to have faith to live it. You know, this is the reality that, you know, when Christ came to save us, he saved us, but we have to cooperate with the free gift of God. Salvation is a free gift, but you have to cooperate with the gift that's been given to you. So that's what we go here. And so here's Paul trying to teach the, Galatia, the church of Galatia. This is what it means to be in Christ Jesus, okay? So we start here, chapter 5. It's the last, uh, second to last chapter there. And he starts, we'll start with 16. He says, my point is that you should live, live. This is how you live. You should live with the spirit and you will not yield to the cravings of the flesh. So he's talking about when we yield to God's Holy Spirit, we will not be given into the flesh. So what does that mean we're given into the flesh? <laughs> not something good. So let's go on. Verse 17. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. The two are directly opposed. This is why you do not do that what your will intends. But, verse 18. But if you're guided by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now he talks about how you can tell how you're living. And so we need to sit there and put this applies to ourselves and put my life to what Paul says. Am I living in the flesh or am I living in the spirit? And he gives us the examples of both. So it is obvious what proceeds from the flesh. Lewd conduct or the translation is fornication, sex before marriage, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, hosti hostility, hostilities, Bickering, jealousy, outbursts of rage, selfish rivalries, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And then he says, I warn you as I have warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, let's be real here. He was talking to the church of Galatia. And he had to tell these church members... If you're doing this, you're not going to heaven. Huh? These were people that said they were already saved. But he says, if you're doing this, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Okay? Now he talks about the other. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faith, mildness, and chastity. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead. Let us never be boastful or challenging or jealous toward one another. Okay, so here Paul does. He sets it up. 
He says, this is the, shows who belongs to Christ, and this shows who belongs to the flesh, and who's not going to be with the Lord, and this is going to, who's going to be with the Lord. Now, this is interesting, because often, in dealing with people, people say, Father, again, years ago, someone got in debate with me, and he says, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter. I'm by, saved by the blood of the Lamb. I can do anything I want. I am going to make it. And I'd say, so, you go into McDonald's, you take out your machine gun, you blow everybody away. Boom, 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 boom. Then you take the machine gun, blow your brains out, you're going to heaven. Absolutely. That's a lie from the evil one. Paul was being very clear here. Those who do such things will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, it's interesting here because if we go to another, and I'm going to explain how we do this, but let's go to another place. I used to sit there, Ephesians, Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians. It's the next book. And I used to, when I taught all boys, I would make my kids memorize this. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. And this is what Paul, again, is saying, chapter 4, um, chapter 5, yeah, 5 to 7. This is what it says in Ephesians. It says, make no mistake about this. So Paul is now talking to an altogether different church. He's talking to the church of Ephesus. And when he's talking, he's again talking to the church members. He's talking to the people. Again, there was no New Testament here. Paul was writing it as he's speaking here, right? This is the New Testament. It's being written. So Paul is teaching the now the church of Ephesus who goes to heaven and who doesn't. Now let's listen here. Here he says... In verse 5 of chapter 5, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake. And you didn't argue with Paul. He wouldn't put up with arguing. Make no mistake, he says. <laughs> no fornicator, someone who has sex outside of marriage, no unclean or lustful person, in effect an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ or of God. Let no one deceive you with worthless arguments. Again, He's saying, Pih, I don't want to hear your arguments. I don't want to hear it. Let no one deceive you with worthless arguments. I love her. I want to be with her. Oh, we love each other. Worthless arguments, he says. Let no one deceive you with worthless arguments. These are sins that bring down God's wrath on the disobedient. Therefore, have nothing to do with them. Okay, so now he's setting up. The spirit and he's setting up he's talking that this is what happens so we got to sit there and first of all take our lives and think am i living by the spirit or am i living by the flesh and then what he says how do we get to live according to the, the book of galatians how do we start living by the spirit and he says he tells us by crucifying our flesh you get what that means gentlemen that you and i are supposed to kill the passions of our flesh. That takes discipline, not excuses. You got that? Often when people come to Christ, they give all the excuses why they're not men. I'm weak. I can't do it. I'm just like everybody else. Da, da, da. Those are excuses. It's not discipline. Now, can we save ourselves by what we do? No, of course not. Huh? So, then he says... That the Spirit comes and helps us. Now, so now we're setting up this thing. Okay, well, Father, I don't have much hope. Oh, yes, you do. Because what happens here now is God gives us the Spirit. And we've talked about the Spirit a couple times during this uh, discussion. Because until a person really starts living by the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit take control of their life, they really haven't surrendered themselves completely yet to Christ. Like we, I don't know if you were all there, but I was there and we had a lot of people there when uh, Billy Graham's son Franklin came to Rock the Lakes. And then a thousand people came down and gave their life to Christ for the first time. Okay, is that it? Franklin says, yep, that's all you need to do. We got to live it now. That's why we're teaching the people now. We're in the middle of the classes of teaching people what it means now to be a disciple. It isn't just enough. You need to live it. I need to live it. We all need to live it. And the way that's going to happen is when you and I let the Holy Spirit take control of our life instead of us. And the way we let the Holy Spirit take control of our life is daily surrender to the Holy Spirit. And I would encourage you, the prayer that I have given you every time that you have to pray before you get into your group, this is the prayer on here. 
prayer of surrender to the Holy Spirit. That you, if you haven't done it yet, you decide that you're going to start saying this Holy Spirit prayer every day. So that you're handing control of your life consistently to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me. Uh, tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. I promise to submit myself to all that you desire to me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only do your will. Because when you fit, sit there and give the power of the Holy Spirit, then he's going to give you the grace to live by the flesh and not by the, live by the spirit and not by the flesh. Yeah. And so, often, instead of sitting there saying, well, Father, I'm just weak. Or, Father, you don't understand what kind of parents I had. Or, Father, I've always messed up. Or, Father, don't you know where I come from? I don't know, and I don't care. And neither does God. God has set you free from your past. Why do you cling to it? Why do you use your past as your excuse for why you're not living in the Holy Spirit? Huh? Remember I've talked to it before. The devil will keep you focused on yourself and your weakness or your past. Jesus says, you look at me and you look at the future. And so instead of constantly looking at ourselves or our past, that's why I love when you get to the, you know, the Gospel of Matthew and that when it goes through the, uh, the, uh, the history of Jesus and his humanity. There's murderers there, there's rapists there, there's adulterers there, there's whores there, harlots. That's in the humanity, the history that Jesus came from. His past did not dictate his future. Gentlemen, your past cannot dictate your future. God gave you and me a gift. And that gift is his Holy Spirit. And that's why, again, in John's gospel, think about it here. In the gospel of St. John, he talks about, it's better that I leave so I can send the Holy Spirit. Come, right? In John 15, it talks about the Holy Spirit coming. And then in uh, uh, chapter 16, it talks about the Holy Spirit. And he says, the Spirit's going to lead you in all truth. And so what has to happen is you and I, if we're surrendering our life to the Holy Spirit every day, and we're actually giving him control and saying, look it, I can't do it, Spirit. I am of the flesh myself, but I give you permission to take control so I can start living by you. It's a true giving of your life, a true surrender of your life to the Holy Spirit, and then getting out of the way and letting the Holy Spirit set you on fire. Again, I talk about when I go around speaking, you know, I go all around now. And I do it, I'm on the road 45 times. Friday morning I leave for uh, uh, Los Angeles. I'll give a talk in Los Angeles on Saturday. And then all the following week I'll be out in North Carolina. Down in Cary, North Carolina. And again, when I'm talking, or if I don't feel like talking, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like it. I'll just start praying the Holy Spirit. And I'll say, I can't do this tonight. I'm tired, or I don't want to do this, or whatever it is. They're not open to it, whatever. They get mad at me, whatever. Stop it. And he says, well, I, first of all, stop, I want you to stop looking at yourself. And second of all, I want you to start looking at who you're talking to. Third of all, I want you to give it to me. So then I pray the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit sets me on fire. And people come to watch me burn. Huh? The Holy Spirit wants to set you on fire. He wants you to stop making the excuses for why you can't be. This isn't of you. Remember when the Holy Spirit came in and he talked to Moses? He was a burning bush. The bush did not burn, but there was a fire around him. When you and I surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit and give him control, there's a fire around us. And this fire will give us power. And this fire will draw other people. And we'll start living by God's spirit. So again, the key is to surrender and to crucify these things in our life. Which means, again, you are going to have to discipline yourself. You know, again, just like if, I was, if you were going to be a football player. I want to be the best football player. Okay, son, you're not going to be a good football player if all you do is sit there and watch the game and show up to play every once in a while. You're going to suck. It's just that simple. To be a good football player, what do you got to do? You got to practice, practice, practice. Are you going to deny yourself? Oh, yes. And if you sit there and you go to the coach and says, okay, coach, I'm going to try. I'm going to try really hard. I'll be at practice next week if I can afford it. What's the coach going to do? He's going to throw you off the team. huh? 
when I was at Cathedral Prep, the biggest fight with my boys, I mean, every year is what's more important, God or sports? What do you think won? Sports, always. Always. And still this day. And most of our lives, too, huh? Like, again, I would sit there, and the boys would sit there and work. They would become state champions, right? And to become state champions, they would go and they'd, they'd go and practice for four hours a day. Four hours. Can you imagine? Just so they could become state champions, right? And the one year they all became state champions, football, we beat Central Bucks West, right? But and when they're my age, and they're all like in their 40s now, 30, well, 30s, and some of them are fat and bald, and when they look at their kids, I was a state champion football player, son, when I was your age. And the kids just look at them and say, shut up, Dad, you're just fat and bald. Huh? Nobody cares. And yet think of all the time and energy we put into things that don't matter. Now, it doesn't, ma- that doesn't mean sports is no good. Sports is great. But if you need to do that to win a championship, to be good at a sport, how much more do you have to cooperate with the grace of God to be holy, to be a person that lives in the spirit instead of making excuses why you can't? You and I need to practice, practice, practice. And that practice, practice, practice comes through our prayer life of our surrendering ourselves and the discipline of our life. You know, again, I can't, for men, I can't tell you this enough. The word of God says in Proverbs, my men die because of lack of discipline. Discipline. We discipline ourselves to make money. We discipline ourselves to play sports. We don't discipline ourselves in the spiritual life. That's why so many of us are not living the lives Christ called us to, are not living lives that are bearing fruit because it's so focused on ourselves, so focused on our past, so focused on our weaknesses that we forget that we have power in God. We forget that God's in charge of my life. If I'm here, if he's not, why are you here? Why are you watching this? You need to sit there. And if he's not, I want to make make sure you make it very clear. Jesus, I want you to take complete control of my life tonight. Jesus, I give you my life. Repent of my sins. Now, again, repentance means what? That you're done with that sin. It's not like, well, you know, I'll try to stop having sex with my girlfriend, you know, but I really like her. She's kind of hot. Well, who do you like more? Your girlfriend or Jesus? (laughs) My girlfriend. I know. Enjoy hell. The reality is this. You and I get to make choices in our lives. And these choices are eternal choices. These choices determine where your eternity is. God gave you free will and he will not force any of us to be with him forever. He will not force it. It's a choice. He gives us the grace to live the choice we make. But we have to make that choice for him. We've got to completely give it to him. And so when you and I do that, then he'll give us the grace. He will be faithful, but we need to be faithful to our part. We accept that gift, receive that gift, and live that gift. And again, isn't it amazing? We've talked about this before, too. In Acts chapter 2, he sits there and he says, Go and pray. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. <sighs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power. And when we get the Holy Spirit, he gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We just dealt with the fruits of the Holy Spirit in the book of uh, Galatians here. But we want to sit there and talk about some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And again, depending on what translation you have of the Bible, this is Isaiah Isaiah chapter 11. Excuse me, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. And this is what it says there. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord rests upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and his delight will be the fear of the Lord. And so what these gifts are is they're ways for us, they're gifts that God gives us. Now, a gift cannot be earned. A gift is a gift. He gives us these gifts, and he says, okay, I want you to learn and use this gift. So when he gives us the gift of wisdom, that means that we can sit there and start understanding the things of God. That God can tell us through the Holy Spirit what the thing we're dwelling on of God. When it comes to saying that we we get this knowledge of who God is. You know, we get this understanding, another gift, that we get this gift. For us as men, what do you think the most important gift is of the seven? Do, 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 do. Begins with an F. No, that's, that's one of the fruits. Good job, though, Tom. Fortitude. What is fortitude, gentlemen? 
It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but what does it mean? Courage. Courage. For us to have courage, gentlemen, to stand up for what's right. And again, I've talked about it before. But you know, all of us who are Christians, right now there's the synod going on in Rome for the Catholics. And they're discussing certain things. And the cardinals are fighting amongst each other. And it spills over when they're on television. And that's, it just drives me crazy. Here the cardinals are fighting. But we fight with one another, Catholics and non-Catholics. We try to constantly figure out who's right and who's wrong. And as soon as someone, we're always trying, well, that's not right or that's not right. And so we're always trying to trip one another up. But in our lifetime, gentlemen, in our lifetime, we're going to be at war. And if you haven't got it yet, know it. That the radical Islam wants us all dead. It's just that simple. And so if we're not strong, that's why to me the Lord has raised up men in Christianity. And Catholics and Protestants are starting to come together. And instead of arguing about our differences, we're starting to say, okay, we've got to have some courage here. We're going to have to, we don't want to die, we don't want to kill for the faith like Islam does. We want to die for the faith. We want to stand up and say, this faith is willing to die for. I'm willing to give everything. Now, I'll protect my family. I'll protect my country. And if I need to, I will sit there and kill for it. But that's not my main thing. My main thing is to give up my life for Christ. That's going to take fortitude, gentlemen. And if you're called and it cost you your life for Christ, would you give your life for Christ? And see, it's a gift that God gives you to have this fortitude. Now, that doesn't mean we should in any way, shape, or form be fighting with Islam and saying all Islam is a wrong. Oh, come on, of course not. Radical people that want us dead unless we convert. And so if they come, and the days are coming when they will, and they're sooner than later, are you man enough by the gift of the Holy Spirit to stand up for the faith no matter what it costs you? Huh? Again, as we talk about as Catholics, Catholics, of course, when they say amen, and it's not just for Catholics, but any prayer. When you say amen to a prayer, what does amen mean? I do believe, but it means more than that. It means it's the amen stake. If Paul was a tent builder, and if he put the last stake in, it was called the amen stake. And so when you say amen, you are saying, I would stake my life on what I just said. Or what you just said. So for Catholics, when they come up to communion and the priest or the minister says body of Christ and they say amen, they're saying, I would stake my life that that is truly God. It's not just something I go to on a Saturday or a Sunday because I have nothing else to do today. Because Jesus said, this is my body. Jesus is not a liar. So I stake my life. I was once with a, a great, uh, the head of the Baptist church at Grace, where he's retired now. But we were, uh, the, uh, the Protestant ministers we were all together. And he says, I would take a bullet that there was a true Adam and a true Eve. That he would be willing to die just that Adam and Eve were real. Because the word of God said it. Now here's a man of courage. Would you be willing to take a bullet for what you believe? And if the answer is yes, because again, people say they would all the time. I had a guy years ago who was a male prostitute, huh, when I used to work with Father Peterson. And he'd sit there and, you know, he'd go and he'd make a lot of money selling his body to men, women, different things. He was a bodybuilding builder, and he already did this uh, when he was 17 years old. And he'd look at when, he, when he was in college, uh, Father Pete called me and says, you've got to go and spend some time with him. So I went down, and he's sitting there saying, oh, Larry, I love Jesus so much. That I would give my life for him. And I said, oh, so-and-so. Jesus doesn't want you to give his, your life for him now. He wants you to have, stop having sex with everybody. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> See? Would you willing to give every sin in your life up for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to do that? Because if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to be willing to give your life for him later if the, day, if the time comes. Every day you need to be willing, I would give up my life for Jesus. I stop doing this. And he talks about all these things in the flesh. I'm willing to die for that. For Jesus. I can't do it myself. I don't have the courage.
but Jesus does, and he gave it to me through the gift of his Holy Spirit. So these gifts are being given to us for us to use. It's kind of like I come up to you and I give you a suitcase. And that suitcase, of course, is filled with a million dollars. And I say, here, it's a gift. You can have it. And you say, oh, thank you, Father. And you never open the gift. And then you die a month later of starvation. Why did you die of starvation? Because you never opened the gift that I gave you. God has given you and I a great gift. The Holy Spirit. You and I have to open that gift and have to start letting him take control of our lives. And when we do, generally, we will live this life of power. My favorite thing, which I want to end with tonight, is Timothy. And in Timothy, remember Timothy was a bishop. He was a priest. He ran his own community. And so Paul was talking to Timothy because Timothy needed a kick in the butt, like we all do every once in a while. That's always the truest sign of a follower of Christ, is they're open to getting a kick in the butt when they need one. And so in here, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says to him, For this reason I want to remind you, and I'm reminding all of you tonight, gentlemen, to stir into a flame the gift of God bestowed when my hands were laid upon you. For the spirit that God has given us is no cowardly spirit, but one that makes us strong, loving, and wise. The spirit that God gives us is not a cowardly spirit, but one that makes us strong, loving, and wise. Gentlemen, Paul was speaking to you from 2,000 years ago to today through that same Holy Spirit. And he's saying, gentlemen, let me remind you to stir that gift that we gave you when you were baptized, when you gave your life to Jesus, when you were confirmed, whatever it happens to be, when we gave you the Holy Spirit, you now need to use it and you want to stir it up. And then when you get that, you'll no longer be a coward, but you'll be strong, you'll be loving, and you'll be wise. And what a great gift. But you got to sit there and decide for that, gentlemen. You know, again, sometimes I look out there and I see the faces and I'm just like, you know, really, Father? Really, Son? Really? This is something for the, your whole life. This is something you need to live. What's the point of coming to a talk? Who cares? You need to live it. You need to surrender to the God. You need to have the power of God in your life. You got it? You get it? You're going to do it? (laughs) Meet your Noah's love today and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless, keep, and protect you. He who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, gentlemen. Now, what you're going to do now is you're going to Go and take these, uh, take it next door again. They have cookies and that waiting for you. And uh, one of you, get into a group, whoever it is, and then pray to the Holy Spirit, ask for the Holy Spirit. Because again, gentlemen, only the Spirit of God can reveal to you the Word of God, correct? If you just try to read the Word of God by yourself, it's not going to do well. It'll be from head to head. Nah, your heart needs changed by the Word of God. And so that'll happen when you give it to the Holy Spirit. So then one of you read this. And it talks about the whole realities. And then the questions is, what has kept you so far from full surrender to God's spirit? And gentlemen, if there's someone in your group that hasn't surrendered to the spirit of God, that wants to surrender to the spirit of God, I'd encourage you to pray over that person for this, the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, it would be interesting what kind of things happen with that. But, so if someone has it in their, your group and they want to, well, gentlemen, our job is to strengthen one another. So you strengthen your brother by praying for God's spirit upon them. And the way you do that, of course, is like Paul says, through the what? Imposition of hands. So if one of you in your group hasn't been prayed over, the rest of you in your group, go and put your hands on him, and one of you people take the leadership and ask God to fill that person with your Holy Spirit, if the person's willing to surrender, if they haven't already done it, okay? So, again, do that. What gift of the Holy Spirit do you need to be a better man? Okay, 
and it could, I talked about fortitude, there's other ones in Isaiah, you can be specific about it. And after reflecting on Galatians, what, is, what are you that's still in the flesh? What are you that's still in the flesh? Like again with me, it's always I have outbursts of rage. <laughs> still to this very day. But I'm doing better. But again, it's a surrender of the Holy Spirit lets him take more and more control and less and less of me. So again, all these things, gentlemen, are not miracles instantly. Sometimes they are. But it's usually a gradual thing. You don't come out of your mother walking. You come out of your mother crawling. But you got to be on the way. You just can't wallow in what was. you got to be always facing forward. Okay? Those of you who need to go to confession, I'll go, I'll go in the confessional. The rest of you go next uh, store. We'll see you next month, but we'll see you November 1st, hopefully, at the Warner Theater. God bless you, gentlemen.